In example two, we're given two coordinate pairs and we're asked to determine which one is a solution to the equation y equals 4x minus 2. To do this, we'll start with the first pair, 5 comma negative 18, and plug those values into our given equation in the appropriate place. So for y, we'll substitute in negative 18, and then for x, we'll substitute in positive 5, And what we're checking is whether or not the two sides of this equation are equal when we have this specific xy pair. In this case, on the left-hand side, we just have negative 18. And on the right-hand side, we would get 4 times 5, which is 20, minus 2, would give us positive 18. Those values aren't equal, meaning 5 comma negative 18 is not a solution to this equation. Now we want to go through the same process with the point 1 comma 2. We'll plug in 2 for our y variable and 1 for our x variable and see if the two sides of this equation are equal when we substitute in those values. In this case we'll get 2 equals 4 minus 2 or 2. That checks out. That's a true statement, meaning that 1 comma 2 is a solution to this equation. In example 3, we want to find one other solution to that same equation. In example 2, we were given two coordinate pairs to test. Now what we want to do is just plug in a value for x, anything besides 1 since we already know its coordinate pair, so instead of 1, let's plug in 2. When we plug in x equals 2, we get 8 minus 2, or 6, which means we have another coordinate pair, which is a solution to this equation, 2 comma 6. We could continue that process indefinitely, plugging in more and more values for x and generating a corresponding y value. We can't really do that though, since that would take forever. So what we do is turn to graphs, and graphs allow us to represent every solution to a given equation. For instance, for this equation, y equals 4x minus 2 that we've been talking about, we could plot the first point that we found, 1 comma 2, and the second point that we found in example 3, which is 2 comma 6, all we need are two points to make a straight line. And if my line was drawn a little straighter, we'd have an even better representation. But that line represents every single xy pair that is a solution to that equation. The way we approach this in this case is by setting up a table of values, even though we didn't formally construct this. But first we found out that when x is 1, y is 2, or rather we tested that point. Then we found that when two, uh, x is 2, y is 6. And again, we could continue that pattern, we could generate more points, and they would continue to be on this straight line that we generated. So constructing a table of values is one method for graphing an equation, uh, graphing a linear equation. Another is to notice that this equation is in slope-intercept form. Which we write more generally as y equals mx plus b. Where our value for m represents the slope of that equation and our value for y represents the y-intercept. I'm sorry, our value for b represents the y-intercept. Looking back at our last example, 4 at y equals 4x minus 2, minus 2 is our y-intercept, and our straight line, if we drew it accurately enough, hits the point 0, negative 2. 
that means we can use that y-intercept as a starting point. In example five, that means our y-intercept would be at negative one. So we plot the point zero, negative one. And then we can use our slope to determine how to move from there. Slope is rise over run, meaning the number on top tells us how far to move up or down. In this case, we'll go up three, and we'll go, sorry, to the right, because the number on bottom tells us how far to move left or right, to the right two units. Starting at our y-intercept then, we'll move up one, two, three units, and to the right one, two units. Now we have two points plotted, and we can construct that straight line. In example six, we have a similar scenario, but one key difference is that now our value for m, our slope, is less than zero. But we still consider both our slope and our y-intercept, as long as our equation is written in slope-intercept form. In this case, our y-intercept will be 0, 5. Our slope is still rise over run, but now that value is negative 5, negative 5 fourths, meaning we have to do something with that negative. There are two ways to approach this. One is to rewrite this as negative 5 over 4, because that negative out front only applies to the numerator or the denominator. Writing it this way would tell us to find our next point, we would move down 5 and to the right 4. So we could start at our y-intercept and move down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units and to the right 4, and we would have our straight line. Or, alternatively, we could consider negative 5 fourths equal to 5 over negative 4, in which case we would move up 5 units and to the left 4 units. So we would move up to 10 and to the left 4 units to negative 4, and we would find another point that falls along that same straight line pattern. We don't have to do both, we only need two points to make a straight line, but it's important to note that if we have a negative in front of our slope that only applies to the numerator or the denominator, it reverses the direction that we move, but it only applies to one of those directions, not both. Another key thing to pick up on is that in this case, we had a negative slope and we have a decreasing line. That's just something to catch on to. Uh, if you're graphing an equation, if your slope is negative, that line should be headed down as we read it from left to right, versus our previous two examples had positive slopes and we had increasing lines. As we read the graph from left to right, the line is going up or our y values are increasing.